Hey, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Gulp. Gulp is a very popular task runner. It's a JavaScript task runner, which you can install on your machine and uh, include in your projects. So that way you can process things like SAS files. You can concatenate uh, JavaScript files, uh, minify files. Uh, it's extremely robust and lots of great support. Uh, Gulp is a, as the time of recording this video, is the more popular version of uh, task runner, JavaScript task runners. Uh, Grunt is an, another application which does the same thing as Gulp does but just in a different way. Uh, Grunt is currently kind of fallen by the wayside in terms of popularity so we'll go ahead and stick to Gulp in this video. Uh, Code, Code Kit is an alternative to um, uh, an alternative to Gulp and Grunt. Uh, it's a GUI, it's a graphical user interface, so that way you can use um, uh, an application where you can view files, select files, apply different settings and, and output, things like that, using this uh, sort of a GUI uh, uh, pro application without having to use the command line uh, to, uh, uh, prompts, uh, the command line tools, or the terminal, for example. So it makes it really simple, but it's uh, it, it kind of fall, falls short when you're working in a large team, for example. Uh, and it's also a premium application. So this is $34 versus Gulp and Grunt, which is free. Uh, Prepros is also just like CodeKit, uh, except it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux, whereas CodeKit is available only on the Mac. Uh, again, these applications are great. They're premium applications, uh, and they're suitable for small projects uh, and for uh, individual projects. But in a team environment, you will eventually need to move to Gulp or Grunt. Uh, in order to work with Gulp or Grunt, you need to have a Node.js installed in your machine. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on Gulp. So if you decide to take uh, check out Grunt, um, once you know how Gulp works, transition in Grunt is actually relatively simple. Okay, so in order to get started, we need to have Node.js installed on our machine. So head on over to nodejs.org. And if you're on a Mac, you'll get the Mac version of this application. Go ahead and click download the recommended for most users version here. And this will install Node on your computer. It'll have the default installation prompts. So it'll just click next, 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 install. Nothing special there, so you should be good to go. When you install Node, it'll come with Node Package Manager, NPM, uh, which will get installed on your computer, so that way we can use NPM in our project as well. So to make sure, after you go through the installation process, to make sure that things installed properly in your computer, go ahead and pull up the uh, command prompt, or if you're on a Mac, pull up the terminal application. And the first thing we want to do is check to see if we have node installed successfully. So you would type in node-v. So it looks like we have a node installed successfully. Perfect. And with that, remember node came with npm. So we want to make sure that we have npm installed here as well. So you would type in npm-v. Give that a second. I have a delay on my end. So maybe if you're on a Mac, this is more instant. Let me hit return. There it goes. Version 3. So we're good to go there as well. Okay, perfect. So once we have this installed, we can start using npm. And the first thing I want to do is install Gulp globally on my machine. So you would type in npm install dash g for global Gulp. Hit return, and this will uh, fetch uh, Gulp a plugin from the uh, npm from npm and install it on your machine. There it goes. And let's wait for this to process and install the uh, Gulp plugin on global in our machine. So if you're on a terminal and you get a permission error, what you, or simply what you need to do is type in sudo npm install, and move the mouse out of the way, uh, globally gulp. So all you need to do is the same command uh, that we have up here, except we included sudo beforehand. And what this will do is it'll ask you for your administrative password in order to install gulp globally on your machine. Perfect. So once we have that good to go, we need to check and see if we have gulp installed successfully. It's having gulp dash V. Give that a second. Uh, you may need to hit a return on your end. Let's see, there it goes. So it looks like we have command line tools installed successfully for Gulp version 3.9.1. So we're good to go there as well. Perfect. So the next thing we need to do is navigate to our project folder. In our case, it's on my desktop here. Uh, here it is here. I'm going to actually delete this package. We're going to create that in a moment. So here's our project folder. Uh, nothing inside this uh, CSS folder. Nothing inside the image folder. In JavaScript folder, we have modernizer. Inside scripts, we have jQuery and main.js. Eventually, what we're going to do is combine these two and minify it. 
Let me scroll back here, and then here's our SAS directory, SCSS. We have main.scss and we have normalized.scss. So eventually we need to convert these two files into traditional CSS and move it into here. So we're going to do that with using gulp. Okay, so here's our starter project file. Perfect. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to this folder in our command prompt or the or the terminal if you're on the Mac. So on the Mac, it's actually quite simple. You would type in CD anywhere in your directory, and then you just drag the folder, the project folder, right in here. So after typing in CD, you get the path here. On a Windows, it's uh, it's not that simple, so we're just going to erase all of this. So we need to type in a desktop and forward slash gulp dash project. Perfect, so now that we're in our directory, uh, in our project directory, so we can start working in that directory. So remember, if you're in a Mac, all you do is just simply type in CD, and then just drag your folder right over here. It'll create the path for you, hit return, and you should be good to go. Perfect. So on a uh, command um, command prompt, so to clear this, so you would type in CLS, and that'll go ahead and clear that for you. If you're on a Mac, you just type in clear, it'll do the same thing for you as well. Perfect. So now we're inside this project directory, we, we could start working in it. So the first thing we need to do is create a file called package.json file. So let's go ahead and do that now. npm init, hit return. It's a bit of a delay on my end, so in yours it might be relatively quickly. So what this will come up with a series of prompts for you. So, oops, uh, hit return too quickly, but essentially it asked me uh, the name of the project. So by default, it'll suggest a default project name, which is our project folder. I just hit return there. You could just type in something differently if you'd like, hit return. You can skip the description, all these different entries. You can just keep hitting return, and it'll kind of tell you, is this okay? Yes, it is, perfect. So you can just keep all the defaults. You should be good to go. I'm gonna type in CLS again. So if we look at our project directory now, now we have a new file here called package.json. Perfect. So now we can start installing uh, different uh, Gulp uh, plugins and save them as dependencies for our project. So the first thing we really need is Gulp. So we type in npm install dash dash save dev. This, this will save it as a development dependency, meaning our project depends on Gulp. Okay, hit return. So this will go out to npm install Gulp. There it goes. And if we look at our project folder, let's, let's wait for this installation to finish. Okay. And if you get these warning messages, they're okay to ignore. If I look inside my project folder now, we have a new folder here called Node Module. So if I click in here, you'll see all the Gulp um, uh, plugins, if you will, that you can, uh, the Gulp files, if you will. So we can ignore that for now as well. Perfect. And what we need to do now is uh, navigate to our our project in Atom. So go ahead and move the project into Atom. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, preview of the page here. This is uh, viewing index.html. So in order to work with a gulp in our project, we need one more file uh, to get started. So the file is going to be called gulpfile.js. So let's go ahead and do that now. So inside gulp, the project right over here in Atom, new file gulpfile.js, perfect. So this is gonna be in our root directory right over here. And so the first thing we wanna do is, uh, well, so here's what we're gonna create. We're gonna create um, uh, compile uh, SAS files. In other words, convert SAS files to uh, traditional CSS. We're gonna concat uh, JavaScript files and combine them, okay? Rather it's combine, um, Combine and concat them. Perfect. And the last thing we want to do is the um, uh, minify, minify the JavaScript file as well. And we're also going to have a watch task as well. So that way, uh, when you do these things, it'll sort of happen automatically. So we'll, we'll go ahead and set those things up for us. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is install. We install Gulp. We also need to install um, uh, SAS. We need, uh, uh, gulp concat uh, gulp uglify in our project so what does that mean exactly so if we go to the npm website right over here we could search for these plugins so the first one we can search for is gulp sas so here it is up here this is the plugin we're going to be using in our project and here they even give you an installation um, on how to do that install it in your project so if we go back to our command line prompt over here i'm going to clear this out so we need to type in npm install gulp dash sas dash dash save 
dev. And this will save as a development dependency. Hit return. And it will essentially what this is doing, this is this command right here that I uh, typed in right over here. This will install uh, Gulp on our computer. So I'm having a bit of a delay on my end. So on your end, there it goes. Uh, it should happen a lot quicker. Uh, okay, perfect. And this will go ahead and install SAS for us so that we can use it in our project. Cool. Okay, let's give it a second for that to go through. Okay, it looks like we're almost done. There it goes. Now we're finished. Perfect. So now I'm going to type in CLS again. Again, ignore the warning messages. They're okay to ignore. Perfect. Okay. So head back over to our project in Atom. And so the first thing we want to do is uh, require Gulp in our project. So that way the Gulp methods are available to us. Okay. And the Gulp methods we're referring to is going to be um, uh, task, run, watch, source, and destination. So we're going to use all of those methods in our project. So let's go ahead and create. Uh, let's first let's create a variable gulp uh, equals require <clears throat> and we want to require gulp so we have that plug installed we can start using it perfect and the next thing we want to do is a variable uh, this is going to be our SAS variable require remember we installed a SAS plugin from gulp mo moments ago so we can go ahead and include this as well so gulp dash SAS, so that'll put it in a variable so that way we can target these uh, variables and then utilize their uh, uh, corresponding methods. So instead of having to write variable over and over again, I'm going to go ahead and remove this semicolon, put a comma here, and go ahead and remove this extra variable here. Perfect. And make sure to have that semicolon at the end. So the difference here is we don't, we're not including var multiple times because we're going to be adding more variables here as we move along. So for now, we just have gulp and we have gulp SAS. Perfect. So now we can start using gulp methods and using the SAS plugin to essentially take our SAS uh, files over here, convert them to, to traditional CSS, and move them into this folder here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, so for that, what we want to do is set up a gulp task. So gulp.task, this is that one method that's available to us. Okay, and this will take two parameters. So the first parameter we want to include is going to be the name of this task, which is going to call it SAS. And we're going to include an anonymous function right over here. Perfect. And what the SAS function is going to do for us, so we're going to return. So what's the file we want to return? So we want to return both of these files here. So instead of having to target both of them, what we're going to do is going to call globbing. So return gulp.source. And let's go and target the uh, directory of SCSS forward slash. And in here, I'm going to use an asterisk.scss. And what this is essentially doing is look inside the SAS directory right over here and select all the files that have the extension .scss, which is these two files over here. So grab those two files. And then what you want to do is pipe them. This is a gulp terminology. Pipe them into our SAS plugin which is what we installed right over here. And we included that in a variable. So we have this gulp variable here, which we included here, here as well. We named our task a SAS. We now piped the files that are inside our SCSS directory into, um, uh, we put them inside here as a source, grab these files, uh, run them through the SAS uh, plugin right over here. Here's that variable, bingo. This will run through the SAS plugin, type in pipe, continue to pipe it. Okay, and what do we want to do with it? Gulp destination. Okay, that's the method for uh, gulp destination. This will move it to our CSS directory. So again, we're grabbing all the SAS files. We're running the SAS files through the SAS plugin, which is right here. This will convert all the SCSS to traditional CSS and then move these files into our CSS folder. Go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and actually run this app, this plugin. So we're inside our Gulp project, so we can type in our task. So the name of our task is called SAS. So if I type in Gulp SAS, this should run the application, the rather the task for us. Okay, go ahead and hit return if it's a little bit slow on your end. Perfect, there it goes. Uh, this should respond much quicker on a Mac in my experience. Uh, on Windows, the 
appears to be a bit of a delay. Uh, okay, perfect. So this ran the SAS task and it finished after 64 milliseconds. So if we look over here, we'll see our CSS directory now has main.css and normalized.css. Excellent. So to test to see, make sure this is actually working. So we can go ahead and create a variable. I'm going to create something very simple, the red color. Okay, perfect. And we're going to target the body tag, give it a background. Okay, red variable, just, just to make sure that SAS is in fact working. Save this. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit, hit the up arrow. This will pull up the last command that we used right over here. Hit return again. There's the task, it ran. So if we look back inside main.css and I scroll down, you'll see that the SAS did in fact get converted to traditional CSS, perfect. And that's, and that's this uh, task right over here. Excellent, so now we have a task in here that will convert as CSS to traditional CSS and move it into a folder main.css. So if we look on our website now, this should, the background here should be red now. Excellent. So now the next thing we're going to do is set up a task to concatenate a JavaScript and minify it as well. So for that, we need to install a couple more plugins. So we're going to need to install the uh, Gulp Concat plugin and Gulp Uglify plugin. So for that, we need to go ahead back over to our command, uh, command prompt or the terminal. I'm going to type in CLS, or if you're in the terminal, type in clear. That will just clear that up for us. So npm install dash dash save dev. And our, the plugin I want to install now is going to be called concat. Okay, gulp dash concat. And again, this you can find this plugin in the npm website. If you want to learn more about it, hit return. Let's give it a second to respond. There it goes. Okay, so we have this installed as well. So we also want to install, let me clear this out again, CLS or clear in the terminal. I want to install, um, a, a, we install concat, we want to install uglify. npm install dash dash save dev gulp dash uglify. Okay, and that will go ahead and minimize, minify our JavaScript file as well. So let's let that run as well. Perfect, so now we have both of these uh, plugins installed. We need to require them in our project, so let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing we wanna do is create um, uh, the variable for our uh, concat. So instead of typing var again, we just included a comma in here. And we use concat require, oops, gulp concat, excellent. And the next one we, we need is the uh, minify uh, oh, I'm sorry, the uglify, uglify, there we go, require gulp dash uglify, excellent, and put that semicolon at the end. So we created two new uh, variables, concat and uglify, and we have these two plugins stored in these variables so we can start using these uh, variables in our project. In our case, we want a task that will process script files, so a brand new task, so gulp dash task, and the name of this task, we're going to call it scripts, run an anonymous function. Oops, looks like we're forgetting. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So now we have our task set up called scripts. So we need this to do something. So we want to return. And what is it that we want to return? So we, if we look inside our uh, JavaScript directory right over here, we have a scripts directory that, which has two script files. So I'm going to combine these two. Okay. So it's going to return gulp.src. And again, we're going to want to uh, get into the JavaScript directory scripts. And what I'm looking for are all the files that have the extension of .js. So we're going to use that asterisk method again that we used up here. So essentially that'll look inside the JavaScript folder, scripts folder, and it'll look for all the files with the extension of .js, which is what this is here. So it'll grab those files. So we want to go ahead and pipe it through the concat. So that will concatenate both of these, essentially putting them together into one file. Perfect, we're gonna concatenate that into the file. The file name we wanna do is all.js. Okay, excellent. And the next thing we wanna do is continue to pipe it. Because what I wanna do is um, uh, minify or uglify, use the our uglify uh, plugin. Let's go ahead and do that as well. So that will go ahead and minify that for, that for us as well. And so once we're finished with that, we wanna go ahead and pipe it 
gulp dot destination d a s t and where do we want to put this we're going to go ahead and put this inside our javascript folder excellent so i'm going to save this so essentially what we would like this uh, task to do is grab these two files and put them inside our js folder and called uh, uh alt.js so let's go ahead and run this in our um in our uh, command prompt or the terminal so i'm going to clear this out type in gulp and the name of this task is called scripts so type in scripts so this will go ahead and run starting scripts it ran so if we look back inside of here all js we should get both of these files combined into one file so this way when we head back over to index.html we can go ahead and uh, include just the all file so this will include all the javascript files so if we had more plugins for example they would be combined into one file and here we go that that way we can only we only need to target one javascript file as opposed to multiple javascript files for instance if you had jquery plugins for example things like that you want to reduce the amount of http requests that your website uh, is doing so that way you can have um, make sure this is correct as well so that way your website will load faster okay save this good to go if I refresh this no changes here as of right now so all we're doing is we're combining uh, these JavaScript files into one and moving it into a new file called all.js excellent so that's great but the thing is you know right now we have these two tasks running for us and the only way to run them is if we manually kind of go in here and type in gulp sas for example oops make sure we type that in correctly and this will run the task for us manually so we have to kind of go back and forth from the terminal or the command prompt which is not very efficient so we have a new task we can create which will watch these files for changes and then it'll run the corresponding task so let's go ahead and do that now so I'm gonna hit return here just so we can move that up a little bit perfect and I'm gonna type in gulp dot task and the name of this task is gonna be called watch an anonymous function right over here excellent so first thing we want to do is watch for changes so gulp dot watch so what are we watching the first file i'm going to be watching for is our javascript files let's do that first so we want to watch for js forward slash scripts remember we're going to use that globbing ask oops make sure to put that forward slash dot js so it's going to watch all these files and once it watches these files it's going to if 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 there are any changes we need to go ahead and uh, run a task and the task we want it to run is called scripts now I put this in an array because conceivably you could have multiple tasks so if something changes here you can have you can add another task over here which will run as well so in our case we just have the one task so we'll just kind of keep that uh, leave that alone and the next next task we would like this uh, gulp watch task to, to look for us is the scss file so if something changes there we want that uh, to run as well so again asterisk dot scss perfect comma let me use a uh, an array again and the task we want this to run is going to be called sas excellent so make sure to put semicolons here so we have two tasks that it's watching essentially so if something changes if any of the files that end with js change in here it'll run this task called scripts which is right over here same thing for our sas files so if anything changes in our sas directory if any any these files get resaved with new uh, sas code it'll run <clears throat> the sas task which we created up here so excellent so let's make sure this is working correctly so make sure to save this <clears throat> head back over to your uh, command prompt or the terminal type in gulp watch and the reason why I'm typing in watch is because we created this task called watch right over here so I'll go ahead and hit return bit of a delay on my end there we go so now it's watching so you see this little uh, uh, underscore blinking which means the gulp task of watch is is running it's waiting for any changes to happen so for example if I head back over to our main.scss and I say I change this let's create a new variable called blue okay and let's say I change this to blue now I hit that save button and watch what happens well as soon as I hit that save button it saw that there was a change in SAS and it ran this automatically so if I refresh this page this turned to blue let's do the same thing with our JavaScript file head back over to our scripts main.js so for example if you do a console log 
hello world. So something changed, I hit that save button. This will run the script file, there it goes. Refresh this page. <clears throat> Let's pull up the console. There's hello world here. It looks like we have some um, errors in terms of it can't find uh, some files in here. That's okay, we can ignore that for now. All it means is that it can't locate these uh, directories. That's, you know, since we are combining uh, jQuery, we actually don't even need these files at all. So, see how much that kind of clears things up for us very nicely and neatly. Go ahead and refresh this as well. Let's look at our console, hello world. So essentially, any changes that you make in here, let's say we wanna have, make this go back to red, run this. If we look at our command, you see that SAS just ran because I typed something, changed uh, the a variable for the background color here. I hit save uh, and Gulp saw that and ran the task. And then same thing here, here as well in the JavaScript file as well. So any changes that it sees inside the scripts or the SAS, it will run the corresponding task. And that's basically it. So uh, there are a lot of plugins to download and use. There's a lot of great documentation on the um, Node uh, package manager npm here that you can look up each plugin and read about it how to use it some examples of its basic usage so it's uh, really great really powerful remember gulp and grunt are the same task javascript task runners uh code kit and, and prepros uh do the same thing but they have a gui so that way you don't have to use the command prompt or the terminal uh, but remember if you're in a team environment you will eventually need to transition to gulp or grunt depending on your team uh, plus if you work on a larger project you'll see that working with gulp and grunt is a lot faster than working with code kit or prepros okay and that's it